It's 4.30 on WKYT this morning. Road crews around central Kentucky preparing for possibly frozen conditions this morning. And we are learning more about the state police investigation into an Estill County murder. Oh. We're looking across the way and seeing a little snow fly around. And not only snow, but it's some rain as well. We'll go over the latest forecast coming up. Also, former U.S. Senator and Governor Wendell Ford is being remembered after a memorial this weekend. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. We hope you enjoyed your weekend. Welcome aboard on this Monday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. For the first track on the weather, let's turn today to meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, we have a track on some snow flying across the region. It's a light band, but still, that could cause some issues as we look across this morning. Just due to temperatures. Now, temperatures are sitting there in the upper 20s, lower 30s. With this snow flying around, we could once again see some light accumulation. I say once again, this weekend was much more than light accumulation, but this time around, it doesn't look like much, but it could be once again enough. Uh, there in Millersburg and work your way through Paris at the moment. You'll be seeing the flakes flying out and about. We're 28 in Lexington, we're in 30s and even 40s down toward the southeast, but that will move on out. We'll drop those temperatures as we go through time. By the afternoon, we're sitting right there uh, around 30 degrees. Light snow showers in the forecast should move on out as we get into early afternoon, but we still have multiple chances in the forecast, and I'll show you when those fall coming up. Okay, thank you very much. Well, bad weather will just not go away from central Kentucky. It seems police and road crews have been out working all weekend and overnight this morning dealing with weather related traffic problems. Yeah, as people head back to work, it was beautiful over the weekend. Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. But Lexington police now say they've been inundated with crashes since Friday. And they worked more than 125 crashes Saturday after almost five inches of snow fell on the bluegrass. Officers tell us uh, those car crashes can impact other police services. Well, unfortunately, we, we still also get our normal calls for service that we have to take. So we, it's not like we can just drop everything that we're doing and just respond to these accidents. So we have to prioritize uh, our calls as we get them. And so we just try to get to those accident calls as soon as possible. Police say they have not received any car accident reports overnight. Road crews have been fighting icy conditions since early last evening. In Scott County, crews used more than 300 tons of salt to keep the more than 270 miles of roads there clear. That's more than twice the normal amount of salt used during a normal snowfall. Officials were worried that melted snow and rain could freeze onto the roadways overnight. Ice is the worst case scenario. Uh, it's hard to do anything we at the it's hard to uh, visually see out there on the roadways, and we, uh, we dread ice terribly bad. Road crews say it costs them about $14,000 every time they go out and treat the roads. While here in the bluegrass, we're preparing for slick roads. Many parts of the Northeast are getting ready for a snowstorm of historic proportions. The National Weather Service is saying that a blizzard headed for the region could be life-threatening. It's expected to dump up to three feet of snow in Boston and New York before it ends tomorrow. New York City's mayor spoke to many in the city on Sunday, telling everyone to prepare as much as possible. Prepare for something worse than we have seen before. Prepare to be safe. Take every precaution. Now is the time to get ready for this extreme weather. Well, the warning starts today at 1 p.m. and extends from northern New Jersey through southern Connecticut. At last check, closings at airports in New York and Philadelphia have canceled three flights from Lexington this morning. And do not forget, you can always help us track the weather wherever you're away from your TV on WKYT.com. You can take control of an interactive first alert defender and zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT first alert defender radar app for your iPad or your smartphone. Just search for WKYT in your app store. And be sure to help us track snowfall totals across Kentucky this winter. Send us your photos and videos using the hashtag WKYT rules winter. Well, he has served Kentuckians for decades, first in Frankfurt, later in Washington. And this weekend, people across the Commonwealth paid tribute to Wendell Ford. The former governor and U.S. senator died last week at his home in Owensboro. Our Sam Smith shows us how people across the Commonwealth remembered Ford on Sunday. Music and memories filled the Capitol Rotunda Sunday afternoon for the service in honor of Senator Wendell Ford. As far as I'm concerned, he was our elder statesman. He had the respect of 
Democrats and Republicans. For former Kentucky Governor Paul Patton, Ford was an inspiration. Kept the picture of two governors in my office. That was, uh, of course, Governor Combs, being from Eastern Kentucky, and Governor Ford. Thomas Preston, senior advisor to Governor Ford, gave the eulogy in front of Ford's family and colleagues. Here truly, then, was and is one of God's finest designs. Yes, a colossus performing good deeds for so many whenever, wherever opportunities arose. Ford will be remembered for his hard work serving as lieutenant governor, governor, state, and U.S. senator. Who, in his own words, was determined to be a workhorse instead of a show horse. One of his favorite expressions. The sole purpose of government is to serve people. And he said it, and he, he believed it, and he lived it. Friends say Sunday's turnout at the Capitol was proof of a job well done and a life well lived. The only thing missing, and, and, it, and I felt like it was going to happen, is you know, him coming out and starting to shake hands uh, because these were his people and that's what he would do. In Frankfurt, Sam Smith, WKYT. And Ford's funeral will be tomorrow morning in Owensboro. A Lexington murder victim will be remembered in Wisconsin this week. Funeral services were held in Kentucky over the weekend for 40-year-old Todd Schumacher in Jessamine County. His body is now being taken to Wisconsin, where another funeral is scheduled for this morning. Family members say the community raised more than $12,000 for his funeral expenses. Schumacher's sister says she is grateful for that support. I I just cannot believe the support. Everyone's been wonderful and helping us through it and just bringing up fond memories of Todd and, and just making sure that justice will be done for a great guy. Schumacher's murder was Lexington's first for 2015. Police say his boyfriend, Matthew Donahue, stabbed him to death last weekend. Police have charged Donahue with murder. We now know the name of a woman found dead on the side of a road in Esto County over the weekend. State police say 29-year-old Ellen Townsend died from a gunshot wound. Investigators think she may have been killed in a murder-suicide. Troopers found the body of the man they think shot her outside of Lexington Hospital. Debbie County's Jordan Valines has the details. If you didn't know her, you certainly knew of her. 29 year old Ellen Townsend was not only well known, she was well liked in her community of Irvine, a community now mourning the news of her murder. I went to school with her. She seemed like a really nice woman. Kind of blew my mind that something like that would happen in this town like that. Because, I mean, you never see stuff like that here. On Saturday, a driver called police after spotting Townsend's body lying in a ditch along Nolan Creek Road. Police say she had a bullet wound to her head. Both people of mine, especially in a small community around here. Investigators say Townsend was last seen riding in a silver Chrysler sedan with 44-year-old Ricky Conrad. And police believe he killed her before driving to Lexington and turning the gun on himself inside his car in a hospital parking lot. Those who knew Townsend said the two used to date. Now at gas stations around Townsend's hometown of Irvine, her loved ones have set up jars in order to raise money to pay for her funeral expenses. Folks around town say this is just one way that they can help the family during this devastating time. They just want to put a stop to stuff like this. I mean, stuff like this just shouldn't go on. Ellen's boyfriend tells us that funeral and visitation arrangements are still pending for her at this time. In Irvin, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Well, Townsend's family says she had three young boys, two girls and a little boy. Louisville Republican Hal Heiner is expected to file for governor today. Heiner, a former Louisville councilman and mayoral candidate, is running with former Lexington Urban County Council member Casey Crosby. Crosby is also the finance chairwoman for the Republican Party of Kentucky. The two will officially file this morning in Frankfort. They're set to run against Ag Commissioner James Comer and state former Supreme Court Justice Will T. Scott in the Republican primary. And Secretary of State and former U.S. Senate candidate Allison Lundergan Grimes, a Democrat, says she plans to announce her 2015 intentions this afternoon in Lexington. The secretary says she plans to run for a statewide elected office this year. 
She said she has been encouraged to run for governor or attorney general or to seek re-election as secretary of state this year. Grimes lost last year's Senate run to Mitch McConnell. She won about 40 percent of the vote, 2 percent less than Jack Conway in 2010 in his run against Rand Paul. The last day for major party candidates to file for state office is tomorrow. Well, state police say they are going through a trooper shortage. The agency is about 100 troopers short of its authorized staffing level. We're told there is a shortage because of retirements and challenges when it comes to finding and training recruits. On Kentucky Newsmakers last month, state troopers said one of the main duties of their service is to police areas that can't normally do so themselves. Where we use the most is in rural areas where there's not a lot of tax base and in industry to fund a police department or sheriff's department, so we are used. Right now, they have about 900 troopers and about 70 cadets. State police accepting cadets for the next cadet class this May.